to our kitchen and welcome to the fourth and final part of home cured bacon. In part one we looked at how to make a cheap, effective and wonderfully tasting cure in your own home. And the cost of that cure? 50 pence to make, 15 pounds to buy for a kilo. In part two we looked at a safe, effective, great tasting curing process. And in part three we looked at how to make a smoking cabinet for cold smoking from everyday stuff you'll have lying around at effectively no cost. Today, what we need to look at is how to take our cured bacon and turn it into rashers and pack those away ready for freezing or whatever other means that we want to preserve them with. So we start with a wonderful premium home cured, home smoked piece of loin, like that, and somehow we need to turn it into rashers. That's the next thing we're going to look at. Let's talk about how you get a rasher off a piece of pork. You don't need to go out and spend £600 on a professional quality bacon slicer. You don't need to go out and spend £60 on a home domestic meat slicer you can get a perfectly acceptable rasher of bacon with a knife. And that's how we did it. The first bacon we cured was all hand cut. And let's have a look at the types of knife I'd recommend if you're going to try that. This would be my top tip if you have one. This is a ham knife and if you're going to cure lots of meat eventually you're going to have to slice a big ham. And a ham knife's the way to do it. And why I recommend this is because it's long. If you've got a big, wide piece of pork loin, you need a long knife to slice it effectively. So that's the best one. But don't worry if you haven't got it. If you haven't got one of those, have you got a domestic carving knife? A decent, long carving knife that you use to slice your roast beef and carve your chicken. If you've got one of those, you can make that work. If you've not got one of those, have you got a decent length, 10 inch or more, chef's knife? Again, you can make that work. Or even a large butchery knife. Slightly thicker blade, slightly wider than I would choose. But if it's what you've got, you can make it work. What won't work very effectively is one of these. This is a sort of utility chef's knife, six inches long. And probably your pork is going to be wider than that knife. And that makes it very difficult to cut. But whatever knife you use, get it sharp. And I use one of those. I can be very boring on knife sharpening. Fiona will tell you that, she's nodding behind the camera. I've got Japanese water stones, oil stones, wet and dry paper, Lansky sharpening systems, and on and on and on. And I can get a knife so sharp that it will slice a piece of tissue paper in free fall. All right, but so what? What we want is quickly, efficiently and regularly to get our kitchen knives sharp enough to do the job we want to do with them. And these modern electric knife sharpeners will do that and they'll do it quickly so you don't let it build up and build up and build up. I did all the knives in our drawer this morning in under five minutes and that's a good thing. So whatever system you use, and if you want to know about knife sharpening, ask me and I'll do a video on the subject. But whatever system you use, before you start making rashes of bacon, Get your knife sharp. Take a look. That is a rasher of bacon. It's perfectly possible to hand cut bacon with a knife and get proper rashers. If you do a lot of bacon and ham and various other things, sometimes a slicing machine can be helpful. We bought this one. This is very simple. It's a simple rotary hand slicer. I think they were made in about the 50s and 60s and a lot of the kitchens had them at the time. You can pick them up very cheaply second hand on eBay and places like that. And it's just a round blade that can come off the cleaning and you can adjust here the thickness of your slice. So let's have a look at that in use.
Works absolutely great. It's not the fastest machine in the world, but you get lovely even rashes and they're consistent in their thickness. Look at that. One piece of pork loin that size, a couple of kilos. It's going to give you all that bacon. We've got it separated because this is the hand cut stuff and that is the slicing machine cut stuff. So that's slightly thinner than the hand cut stuff. Both great. Fiona actually prefers it cut thicker, so that will probably get Fiona's name put on it. She's nodding away behind the camera. Something worth showing you is look at the colour of that smoked, cured pork loin. And look at the colour of this, which is the cut rashers of bacon. A lot of the smoking and the curing is on the surface of the meat. It doesn't penetrate all the way through. So you're still going to get a nice looking rasher of bacon by the time you've sliced up your pork loin or your pork belly. Now, clearly, by the time I've done all of that loin as well, I'm going to have a lot of bacon here. And that's never a bad thing. But because we've been a little bit health conscious, we've not used as much salt as we would have done traditionally a couple of hundred years ago, we now need to preserve all the bacon that we've produced. And realistically, that's going to mean freezing. So what I'm going to have to do is pack a lot of this up into reasonable amounts for our family and freeze it. And there's only two options for that. Freezer bags, or we can vacuum pack it. A lot of people are very keen on vacuum packing. Um, it does have a great advantage in that when you deny a lot of, but not all, bacteria oxygen, it inhibits their action. That said, once this meat is frozen, the action of bacteria will have been inhibited anyway. So it's marginally useful when you're going to freeze, but we'll look at both techniques. It's not possible to spend too much time talking about plastic bags, but I'll spend a little bit. We like to use this particular kind of plastic bag by Lakeland. And there's a couple of reasons for that. One is, it's a decent gauge of plastic with a decent seal. The other is, they print on an area that you can write on with a Sharpie. And you use a Sharpie, not a biro or a pencil. When you live in a sort of small hold of self-sufficient life, you're gonna have a lot of stuff in the freezer and mystery meat is no fun at all. So label it, date it so that you've got proper rotation, you use your oldest products first. We like about 10 rashers in a bag. That's not for freezing, that's simply because that's probably a good meal for the two of us. Don't squish your bacon up, put it in a nice pile. Get all the air out that you can. Seal well. And what I try to do is roll it so that the label, when the bag goes in the freezer, will be uppermost and obvious. The other way that you can pack up your meat is using a vacuum packer. There's a whole range of them on the market from the bog basic to the very expensive. This one costs about 20 quid from Aldi or Lidl or somewhere like that a few years ago. Let's have a look at the inside and see how it works. There is a roll, a continuous roll of plastic bags, so you can make your bags any size you want. That's kind of handy, isn't it? Then there's a little black wire you can probably see here. And when you press on one side of the lid when it's closed, that wire gets hot and seals whatever piece of plastic is lying across it at the time. So you do that to make your bag the right size, it seals and cuts it. You pop your meat in and then you hook the bag over this little nozzle. And if you press on the other side of the lid, that sucks the air out. And while the air's out, you press on both sides of the lid and it seals the whole bag up. So the first step of vac sealing is pull out enough bag for what you're trying to do and simply hit that side. And what that's doing is activating the hot wire all the way across and that will cut off the bag. 
So now we have a custom sized bag for our bacon. We put our 10 rashers in the bag and labelled it as we should. In this step what we're going to do is use this nozzle and the bag needs to surround the nozzle so the bottom of the bag comes under it, top of the bag sits on top of it. The bag nice and flat. What we're going to do now is suck the air from the bag and then heat seal it. When the light goes out, that tells me the bag is sealed. We have one bag of vacuum packed bacon. Well now, if anything shows that that bacon's ready to be eaten, it'll be it cooking in a pan. If I leave you with any message from this series, it's this. In part one, we've made enough bacon cure to cure hundreds of rashes of bacon for 50 pence. In part two, we use nothing more sophisticated than a Tupperware box or a salad drawer. In part three, we smoke this bacon in a cardboard box. And in part four, we've seen we can cut rashes with whatever knife you've got in your kitchen. This stuff is not complicated, it doesn't have to be expensive, and you don't need specialist kit. Anyone can make a great tasting bit of bacon. All they need is the will to do it. Speaking of a great tasting bit of bacon, I'm off to eat this. I hope we we'll see you soon.